Hello Mayhem Makers, Mindy with Quilting Mayhem. Welcome back to another Cream and Sugar Sew Along. We're working on the picnic basket block. So this one, I would call this probably the most complicated one we're going to do, and then they're actually going to get easier from here. So this video, I am going to try to <laughs> do maybe some pausing in between as I do some steps because um, I don't really have a lot of step outs for this. There's a lot of just cutting and sewing as you go. Um, but I don't want to bore you guys with some of the tedious work in between, so I will try to make sure that um, it's just the parts you really need to know and uh, cut out some of the useless stuff. So let's get going. You're going to start out with your B and J, and you're just doing half square triangles. So sew that diagonal line, do the quarter inch seam on either side, cut it apart and press. Set that aside. That's the very first thing they have you do. That one's easy. You guys know how to do that one, okay? Then you're going to take fabrics uh, A, H, and M. They are five and seven eighths inch squares. I'm actually rounding up to six. I will be trimming down um, just so that I make sure they're a little more accurate. It is gonna be a little trickier to trim those though because of the shapes that they're making. They're not just a simple half square triangle block that would be easy to trim, um, so up to you. If you want to round your square up and then trim down along with me, great. If you just want to stick with the five and seven eighths uh, so you don't have to worry about trimming and just take those chances as to how uh, those seams may turn out and how accurate your blocks will be, follow the instructions. Um, and as long as you're keeping that quarter inch seam or maybe a little scant quarter inch seam, you really shouldn't have a problem. But I don't like taking those chances, so I always go up a little bit. All right, so you're gonna take those squares, you're gonna cut them in half on the diagonal, so you end up um, with four triangles of each color way. And then set those aside, a lot of cutting in the beginning. And then you're going to take, uh, what is it, C and J, and cut squares in half and make more triangles. This block has so many triangles and unfortunately not all of them can just be simple half square triangles as they're assembled in the block and that's why you're going to work with a lot of individual triangles which does drive me crazy because this diagonal this is your bias this is your stretchy side because these are the parts that are on the grain um, so you do have those chances of some stretch um, some fabric stretch more than others so hopefully you don't have too much of a problem uh, then what will happen is once you've cut these guys, you're going to place them together in kind of a funky way. You're going to do this and put them together and sew them. But make sure you're laying them out per the book. So the book shows, and I'm kind of backwards from the book, so the book shows the dark on one side and the light on the other. Make sure you're laying them out that way and sewing them that way. Don't follow some of my previous examples where I had fabric kind of going the wrong way. Um, but you're going to then sew those. And press them. All right. And they're going to get attached to some other units because what will happen, open them up, is I'll show you in just a minute a few more triangles that are going to come together so give me a second um, to get some pieces together and I'll show you what the next layout is be right back all right so we're back so keep in mind there's going to be these two fabrics going in two different ways because there is what they're calling a right hourglass and a left hourglass so don't go just sewing these pieces all one direction you are going to have two separate piles it also wants you to sew together fabrics A and M. So you're going to make some bigger triangles that look like that. And then they're all going to get put together. So let's move you here to my messy sewing table. Try to keep everything together. So once you have A and M, you will then make sure you lay down this, which is unit J and C. And then you're going to take a fabric H and lay them together. And then you're going to sew them together. All right. So this is going to make one kind of funky hourglass unit. So it's cool, but it's, as you can tell, it's a little, a little different. So I'm going to take 
these two units right sides together and sew them. You should be able to match up this 90 degree. If those dog ears are bugging you, find your scissors, trim those off, just so you have kind of a straight 90 degree. All right, so just match that up and then sew your quarter inch. All right. Just make sure you're keeping all those lines lined up, your triangles all matched up. Because then we'll need to press it. Because now you kind of have another bigger triangle. So come do a starch and a press. And then we'll take this unit and match it to it. Right. So I am going to pin this center seam because I do want it to definitely match where that is. Um, and I'm really, I'm potentially going to pin these points at the beginning and the end just because I want to make sure that they stay nice and lined up. All right, and sometimes, especially when dealing with bias, they like to get all shifty on you. So I'm just gonna pop pins in. So I have in the beginning, the end, and in the middle. We'll take it to the machine. Pull the pins before you get to them. All right. And I'm just kind of straightening, pulling. Pull that pin before we get to the end. Cut. All right. So you'll have units that look like this. Okay. So we're going to trim some threads, give that a press, and then repeat the process for the left-hand side. All right, and then more cutting squares into triangles. A lot of triangles, uh, but this will get you through the first page of the instructions. Um, so the kind of hourglass shape, cutting some triangles, getting those in. So. We'll get to this point. I'm going to get a few more pieces together and then show you how to start assembling the next portion. All right, so we made the right hand. We're going to make a left hand. So remember, I just want to make sure you don't forget, this triangle is now over on this side with this color here, and these are opposite. So it will be kind of a reverse before you start sewing together. Make sure you're following that diagram. And then once you get those together, you'll need to trim these down. And I probably don't have the right square. So I'll grab the right square to trim and I'll show you how to trim this. All right, magically a ruler appears. This block is supposed to be in five and a half. So I'm making sure I have one of my diagonals on the diagonal line of the ruler. I have five and a half matching up this other side and we're pretty dead on. So I'm shifting the five and a half marks on this ruler with the other diagonal points and keeping this diagonal on that point. And I'm going to just trim my little bit of excess, so a little I don't have a whole lot, thankfully. Oh. Mostly the little dog ears is what I have left, which is what I wanted. So, turn it and just trim it. So, and it's ready. I'll put the other one together, trim it up, and then we'll move on to the next block. 
All right, so we have those guys. They're all five and a half. That first half square triangle, hopefully you've made sure that one measures five and a half. We're now making the fourth block that's going to make a section of this block. Like I said, this block is complicated. Um, lots of pieces and parts, so make sure you're kind of following step by step. Don't get ahead of yourself because you may throw yourself off. So fabric K, fabric N, you're going to cut in half once on the diagonal to get some triangles, right? And then you're going to grab a G. So three inch square and start with just adding triangles. Here, let's move to the table. It's me trying to hold it up. Whoops. Make sure you lay these out correctly. All right, so these triangles are going to go against this square. So start with one side, put it on there. We'll press it. And then we'll sew the other triangle on. making sure you keep the layout. So if this little dog ear bothers you, just whack it off. Okay, so then we're gonna make sure this triangle goes on here, like that, line those edges up. So your quarter inch. This unit, we'll press it. Then we will add this triangle. And I'm going to trim this dog ear off. I'm going to double check make sure I have at least a quarter inch on this peak. So what's nice with this ruler, let's see if I can get you guys a bit closer here, is it has kind of a crosshair here that shows quarter inch. So what I can do is even trim, because I have a little excess because I cut these triangles bigger, so I have there's a cross line here and a cross line here. It is matching right in this square. And then it's making sure a quarter inch. And I'm actually going to trim that bottom edge off. I know. Well, it was pretty scary. It's a little scary for me, too. We're going to cross our fingers that when we put this triangle on, and I'm going to pin it so once again, things don't shift. Once we get it sewn in pressed, everything will line up like it should, right? That's our hope. <laughs> so let's see what happens. The things I do to try to make sure all my pieces are as exact as possible without being too exact, because you know, I also don't want you to be too OCD. I don't want you ripping it out and being worried if it doesn't quite match because we can make everything work. All right, so it's going to look like this. We're going to press it. Let's see how it measures up. Now this is my six and a half inch creative grid square. I do love this one. This is another staple in my room when I start working with bigger blocks. And look at this, ha <laughs> ha. So I have my diagonal here. Here's my five and a half inch. 
really, I don't have any excess after doing that trim. So really I'm just taking off these little dog ears. I'm gonna flip them around, line it up. So I'm lining on the diagonal again, and on my five and a half, and just trim off any little, very little excess. Well, you can see it very very well. So that's that's a winner in my book. That makes me happy. And then what you will do is lay all these pieces out. So we have the half square triangle we started in the beginning. So it's going to face, oops, oops if you can see my whole mat, right? We have that. We have this unit here that we just made. So I'll make sure this square is facing the darker triangle. And then we have our right and left hand basket. So we're going to make sure that those hopefully are facing the correct way. Aha. So it should make these two arrows in this square come together. This bottom of the basket, these colors are here, and then your backgrounds up in here, all right? So make sure you have these darker triangles, the bigger ones, going towards the outside. And then we're just going to lay them together so that quarter inch seam, we put this together as a unit, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. All right, so we have that center unit of the basket done. And now we're going to start working on the parts to make kind of the surround of the basket or the handle of the basket. And it's going to be your basic half square triangle unit. So draw that diagonal line. So quarter inch from either side. That one's easy peasy. And then um, some flying geese is what it's going to be made of until we get to the basket base. So for your flying geese, you'll need your rectangle. And then there's going to be two different colors put on this flying geese. So a lot of times your flying geese, the outer portions are the same. This one's actually going to be different and you're going to make some going one way and some going the other way. So don't make them all the same uh, because they're not. You need opposing colors. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll start rectangle. We're going to start one color. It's going to go on that side. And so on the line. and then cut and trim. Now the other one, what you'll end up doing is taking the darker fabric and starting with it on that right hand side. Okay, so mirror image flying geese. You know me, I try to be efficient. I try to sew as much as possible before the next step. So lighter color, right? So we'll trim it, press it, all that jazz. So it looks like that. will look like that and then you're going to take the dark color and put it on with that diagonal line going from the outer to the middle Let's see I don't know if you can see that line yep there it is go in that direction you're gonna sew on that line Trim the other one, press it. Right, so mirror image. So then this one with that diagonal, put on that opposing side. 
and sew that line. And we're just going to trim and press. Good steam. <clears throat> Try not to throw it on the floor. Okay. So there's our mirror image. Flying geese. All right. So, ta da! So these and the half square triangles are going to make the basket handle get everything put together, I'll show you how it lays out. And then we have the base, we're almost there. Yay! All right, so here we have the basket, the handle is on it, so now we just need to do the base. So it's just half square triangles and the long rectangle strips and the bottom corner. So pretty easy, but make sure you lay it out so that you make sure that your base does what it's supposed to. Because see, as you can tell, it's really easy to try to turn yourself around. And then just sew these on. And then you'll pick a side to sew your bottom triangle or square to one side and then this unit that you create will go to one side, this unit that you create will go to the other side, and you're done. So, be right back. All right, here we go. One basket block, all together and done. Got that base going on, finished. All right, this one for sure. If you need help, if you're having problems, make sure you let me know. I will gladly walk you through anything, so. But once we get through this, the rest actually is pretty easy. So this is the final difficult piece and we'll just kind of speed up in the next couple months, but the next months we'll have multiple blocks that will have tutorials because you are making two or three different blocks each month uh, in multiple quantities. So it's just gonna keep rolling along till we get that big, beautiful quilt done. So hopefully this helped. Hope you're having a great day. Keep on stitching.